Oh, for God's sake, Charlotte's talking about Empress Matilda again. Hi everybody, I hope that you're all doing really well. So today I am here to talk about something that honestly, I didn't really expect that I was going to talk about on my channel, and that is House of the Dragon, which is the new prequel series to Game of Thrones. I'm currently wearing my House Stark of Winterfell t-shirt, even though I believe House Stark constituted about 2.5 seconds of this first episode and I'm not sure how much involvement they're going to have with the rest of the series. Yeah I just didn't think I was going to talk about this because as you may know I'm not really much of a fantasy reader. I have read the full A Song of Ice and Fire series though I haven't read a whole lot of material outside of that main series but something that you know that I am very much interested in is history and it's well documented that the original A Song of Ice and Fire Game of Thrones series is very much inspired by the Wars of the Roses. George R. R. Martin has been very heavily influenced by the history that he reads bits and pieces from medieval history and little details from earlier and later periods. And so obviously I should have expected that this new series was also going to be very much influenced by history. But honestly I did zero research into what this series was going to be about before I went to watch it because truth be told I'm not a massive Targaryen fan. It's just never been something that I've been particularly interested in. I never read the blood and fire history of the Targaryens. I will definitely get around to reading that now that I've actually watched the first episode. And I kind of went into the series with low expectations like knowing that the cast and crew were probably going to give it their all but not knowing what the writing was going to be like and I was really pleasantly surprised. I actually enjoyed it way more than I thought I was going to and I enjoyed it even more when I realised what history they were referencing. I'm going to give you a quick little synopsis of one of the plot lines in this first episode. So we meet King Viserys who is awaiting the imminent birth of what he hopes is going to be a son. He has one teenage daughter Rhaenyra, though of course whilst we're living in a fantasy world we are living in a very medieval patriarchal society in which male primogeniture rules the day and the expectation is that the throne would pass to the next surviving male relative. Because Viserys currently does not have a legitimate son, the expectation is that the crown will then pass to his brother Daemon. And unfortunately through the course of the episode his wife Emma goes into labour. It's discovered that the baby is breached and after many hours of trying to turn the baby into a more suitable position they've been unsuccessful. And very sadly Viserys has to make the decision to have Emma undergo a c-section. Which, side note, I am very very grateful to the BBC for having put This Is Going To Hurt on before I saw this series. <laughs> because I feel like I was a lot more prepped and primed to watch a very grisly c-section after seeing like the 1520 that they did on that show. The choice is basically do you let both mother and baby most likely die by leaving them be or do you want to go the c-section which has the chance, the chance, the slight chance that the baby might survive. He goes with the latter option and unfortunately ends up losing both his wife and the little baby who only lives for a few hours. And so suddenly we're in the middle of a succession crisis. He's back to square one in a way of having no direct male heir, no son, but also so his wife has died. And so the conversation starts to arise within the small council as to whether or not Damon is fit to lead, or should there be an alternate heir. By the end of the episode it is decided that Damon is not suitable to be the heir, and instead Viserys has all of the nobles swear allegiance to his daughter Rhaenyra. She is now chosen as his heir in lieu of a son. In theory she should be the next ruling queen, despite the fact that a woman has never been monarch to the Seven Kingdoms before. Or I think it is at this moment the Six Kingdoms, because I don't think Dawn has yet folded. I told you I'm not up on the earlier lore, I'm sorry. And had I done my research into the series and into the Dance of Dragons, I would have realised pretty quickly what I realised by the end of the episode, which is, oh my god, this is the anarchy! Rhaenyra is meant to be Empress Matilda! Oh my god! If you haven't been about these parts, then hi, I'm Charlotte and I have an obsession with Empress Matilda. You see this? This is my figurine of Empress Matilda that I got from Oxford Castle. This is the smallest size of a print that I had commissioned. I commissioned an Etsy artist to make a print in three different sizes of Empress Matilda because I was frantically googling, like, Empress Matilda merch and couldn't find anything. This is the smallest size. I have, I have one hung in my office because I am that sad. Commission the merch you want to see in the world. As I say, had I actually read Fire and Blood, I would have realised this a lot sooner. Had I done any research into the series, I would have realised a lot sooner, but here we are now. Because I know that so many people are very much interested in the history that inspired Game of Thrones, you know, interest in the Wars of the Roses I think did pick up. Not that that has ever been a, an area of history that people aren't interested in. But I feel like the anarchy is a little bit different. I don't feel like the anarchy is quite as well told and well trodden ground. I think it's something that is like a growing interest, but like I 
I was certainly never taught about the anarchy when I was at school. And even though I did do medieval modules at university, I don't think that I was ever taught about it at university either, which seems like a glaring omission. I feel like if you came up to me at age 18 and said, hey Charlotte, 900 years ago, there was a princess who was meant to be the heir to the English throne. She would have been the very first queen of England. Well, she probably wouldn't have been called queen. She would have been lady of the English, but there was meant to be a female monarch, which never happened because all of the lords and nobles reneged on their promise to make her queen and put some other dude on the throne. I would have had words about that. Basically, I thought I would give you some book recommendations about if you have been interested by House of the Dragon and you want to learn more about the history that inspired it. I probably didn't need all of that preamble. To be honest, it could have been a lot worse. I could have gone into a full-on rant about the original series and that probably would have taken about half an hour at least. That is not what you came for. This is going to be a book list both of recommendations but also talking about books that I have not read but I am very very keen to. A bit of a TBR if you will for the anarchy. I would love to hear any thoughts that you have about any of these books if you yourself have read them. As I say, House of the Dragon, whilst inspired by lots of different things, is very much inspired by the anarchy which was a conflict fought between 1138 and 1153. The main two sides being Empress Matilda, who was the only surviving legitimate child of Henry I, and her cousin Stephen, who ended up seizing the throne after Henry died. Despite the fact that the throne had been promised to Empress Matilda, she had been claimed as the heir. On two separate occasions, all of the nobles pledged their allegiance to her, but the second that Henry died, of course they were like, nah, jokes. I'm not going to delve into the specifics, but it was basically a generation of fighting which culminated in Stephen agreeing that Matilda's son Henry, who would later be Henry II, would be his heir. Like I say, it's much more detailed than that, but you can get much more of the details in these book recommendations. So the first time that I ever heard about this history was through the fantastic biography by Catherine Hanley of Matilda, which is called Matilda, Empress Queen, Warrior. This was one of my favourite books that I read in 2020. Probably my favourite non-fiction history. And this, as I said, is a biography of Matilda's life. A lot of non-fiction history that talks about the anarchy definitely talks about like the conflict as a whole. And if Matilda is mentioned, it's usually in conjunction to Stephen rather than focusing on her life. Something that I always bring up when I talk about this book is how Catherine Hanley really interrogates the sources that she is using because you find a lot of contradictions, a lot of hypocrisies within these sources. Because as you might imagine, a lot of these sources are incredibly misogynist. A woman wanting to rule in her own right? What is this? Matilda is often criticised for being too arrogant, for being too forceful, too full of her own self-importance. And what Catherine Hanley really draws out is that a lot of the times the things that she is criticised for are things that are often praised in the men in her life, for example her father or her brother. But she, as a woman, is criticised for it while she's fighting for her own right to the throne. And she also picks up upon the fact that a lot of these chroniclers become a lot softer to her when she steps down as a claimant and instead proclaims the rights of her son. When she's fighting for her son, suddenly they're all back on her side. But when she was fighting for herself, they were like, oh, this bitch. I just think it's a fantastic biography and everybody should read it. And it, it was what really ignited my love for Empress Matilda. You know, I would not have these guys if not for this book. A book that I actually haven't read myself, but is on my TBR pile, I am very much anticipating reading this is Stephen and Matilda's Civil War Cousins of Anarchy by Matthew Lewis. Now there is another book that talks about Stephen and Matilda in regards to the anarchy called Stephen and Matilda the Civil War of 1139 to 53 by Jim Bradbury. However I've been kind of reluctant to read that one. It's definitely on my TBR list but I've been reluctant to read it because I hear that Jim Bradbury is very pro Stephen and anti Matilda and I know it's important for you to read views that are different to your own, I do know this, but it's also a negativity that I don't want to allow into my life. I will read it, I promise I will read it, I'm not that petty. But what I like about this and what I've read off it so far is that it jumps back and forth between Matilda and Stephen. If you look at the chapters, it is Matilda, then Stephen, then Matilda, then Stephen. We are flitting backwards and forwards through the perspectives, so neither one of these characters outshines the other. So what I'm really hoping is that with this there's going to be a lot of balance in terms of the perspectives. You know, as somebody who is a very fervent Empress Matilda, Matilda fan and really really pushes her claim to the throne and is still cross about it 900 years later um yeah I probably need that balance also side note you should definitely listen to the Gone Medieval podcast Matthew Lewis is actually the co-host of Gone Medieval and I think you know he comes across really well and he knows a whole lot about the Wars of the Roses he has a really comprehensive podcast series about that so highly recommend that. A book recommendation that isn't specifically about the anarchy but is generally about the whole medieval period I think it is really good occasionally to zoom out and read one of these longer ranging histories to get more context into this world is Power and Thrones by Dan Jones. I do admit considering that this is a 700 page book it's kind of rich of me to be like yeah this is a really good introduction to the medieval period because you're kind of looking at it like Charlotte. Introduction? Introduction? But there's a lot of ground to cover it's a thousand year period. I just think it gives you a lot of context for this world. I really like how he 
set up his chapters in terms of you know people who were very dominant at the particular time that he's talking about. The setup is Romans, barbarians, Byzantines, Arabs, Franks, monks, knights, crusaders, Mongols, merchants, scholars, builders, survivors, renewers, navigators and Protestants. So you can kind of see how we are being taken from 410 all the way up to the Renaissance. Another anarchy history book that I'm very keen to get to is The Anarchy, The Darkest Days of Medieval England by Teresa Cole. As the blurb says, this book blends contemporary, sometimes eyewitness accounts with modern analysis to describe a period of England's history so dark and lawless that those who lived through it declared that Christ and his saints slept. If you, like me, are often very much focused on the women of history, then I would highly, highly recommend that you pick up Femina. Femina, A New History of the Middle Ages Through the Woman Written Out of It by Hanina Ramirez. This is a really fantastic new history, which I absolutely gobbled up. Obviously, we are talking about like the wide range, once again, of the Middle Ages, but it's another one that just gives you a lot of context for this time period, this long ranging time period, and how women were treated in different walks of life. You know, we're going from queens to nuns to peasant women and everyone in between. You know, just a lot of really good context for why it is that Matilda is written about the way that she is. And you know, if this is the treatment that she's suffering under, then how are ordinary women dealing? Hi everybody, editing Charlotte here because I actually forgot to mention a book. Hot off of talking about Femina, another book that is focused on women's experiences, but particularly focused on royal women's experiences, is Alison Weir's Queens of the Conquest. This is the first book in her England's Medieval Queen series. This one focuses on England's queens from Matilda of Flanders up to Matilda of Boulogne. I think that's right, I think that's right, because I believe that Queens of the Crusades starts with Eleanor of Aquitaine. And despite the fact that she wasn't a queen consort, Empress Matilda is mentioned in there, as well as, as I say, Matilda of Boulogne, who was the wife to Stephen. And I still stand by what I said when I originally read this book, which is that I don't think that Alison Weir did as much digging into the sources as, for example, Catherine Hanley did. I was not a fan of the way that she did kind of parrot a lot of the original medieval sources and described Matilda as being arrogant and too domineering and forceful and all of that. But what I think this book is really good for is giving you a sense of what medieval perspectives were on these queens and what made a quote unquote good queen, especially when we are comparing her to somebody like Matilda of Boulogne, getting that perspective of what the ideal queen was meant to be like and all the contradictions that follow as a result of that. And if one that I'm really keen to pick up is Two Houses, Two Kingdoms, A History of France and England from 1100 to 1300. Once again, on my TBR right now, and it is also by Catherine Hanley, who wrote Matilda, Empress Queen Warrior. Matilda is almost certainly going to feature in this book because she was married to the Duke of Anjou. This is a period of time where the relationship to France was pretty crucial. For a little bit of context to the precursor to the anarchy, this is one that I read at the beginning of last year and really, really enjoyed because something that I didn't mention at the top of talking about the anarchy was Henry I mm. did originally have have two legitimate children. He had a whole slew of illegitimate bastard children. We know about bastard children very well on Game of Thrones, you know, there was even a battle between two of them. However, the succession crisis really began after Henry I's only legitimate son, William Adeling, was killed after he set sail on the white ship alongside a, a whole bunch, a whole bunch of the royalty and nobility at the time. However, it was the middle of the night, everybody was pretty drunk, pretty rowdy, and a mile off of the shore, they hit a rock, ship goes down, and all but one person dies as a result of this disaster. This book recounts that incident and also goes into the legacy of this incident and what happened afterwards, particularly talking about the succession crisis, Henry I declaring Matilda as his next heir, Henry I's death and the reneging of that promise, and the civil war that ended up preceding that. I think if you're much more into your military history, if you like learning about weaponry and battle tactics and strategy and all sorts of things that I'm really, really not that into. You might instead want to pick up King Stephen and the Anarchy, Civil War and Military Tactics in 12th Century Britain by Chris Pears. I think you can tell from my face that that is not the kind of history that I enjoy, but you know, you, you go go wild. I'm sure at some point I will want to read this, but it is not this day. And a monograph that I'm quite wanting to read about this, because I feel like this will have a lot of interesting contemporary source information, is The Empress Matilda, Queen Consort, Queen Mother and Lady of the English by Marjorie Chibnall. This is a bit of an older one. I think this is one that Catherine Hanley was was referencing quite a lot. And there are just very few books that focus solely on Empress Matilda. So even though it's quite expensive, because it is a monograph, I do eventually want to read this. In terms of primary sources, you would want to check out William of Malmesbury, as well as Henry of Huntingdon, his History of the English People from the year 1000 to 1154. As I say, you do definitely want to bear in mind the fact that these sources are very biased and thinking about, you know, who are these people praising and who are they detracting and why it might be that they have 
have a vested interest in portraying different figures in a certain way. Something that I haven't delved into because honestly I'm kind of scared to is historical fiction to do with the anarchy. I think the only time that I've come across Empress Matilda in fiction so far is Matrix by Lauren Groff. We have one chapter very briefly where we see an elderly Empress Matilda speaking to the main character but yeah so far I haven't actually read any fiction that is to do with the anarchy. Not to say that there isn't any about but as I say I am terrified to see what the portrayal of Matilda is in those books. I think a very popular one obviously is The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett and it's one that I do want to get to but everybody who I know who I kind of share a lot of similar opinions when it comes to books has said no Charlotte don't do it you are absolutely gonna hate that series so I'm a little bit hesitant to. I have been looking into fiction books that are solely focused on Matilda and I would love to get anybody's recommendations for ones that you think are good. Two very popular ones are When Christ and His Saints Slept by Sharon Penman. That one I've heard a lot of good buzz about as well as The Fatal Crown by Ellen Jones. Those both a little bit older, a bit more established. Two more recent historical fiction that are to do with Empress Matilda are The Girl Empress The Chronicle of Maud by Amy Mantravadi. Empress Matilda is often referred to as the Empress Maud which is kind of good because there are so many Matildas in this story that it's not even funny. As well as Lady of the English by Elizabeth Chadwick. I think another reason that I'm often a little bit hesitant to read some of these books is I just don't know what the quality of the writing is going to be. I don't know how accurate these books are going to be. I know that The Fatal crown goes down the tact of Empress Matilda and Stephen were actually lovers so there's this extra dynamic and I swear to god I am sure that if there is ever an Empress Matilda like biopic fictionalized series they are definitely going to go down that track just for the drama of it all but still a key in it, it's still a key. But there we go, those are all of my recommendations as well as my kind of like to be read list of books that are to do with the anarchy and books that you might want to read if like me you are getting into the House of the Dragon series. Of course I do definitely want to eventually pick up Fire and Blood so I can get a little bit more context into what George R. R. Martin was writing about the Targaryens. Will this series actually turn me into a Targaryen girl? Who knows, who knows? You know I'm team Stark at heart really. I just think direwolves are better than dragons, I'm sorry. Dragons can literally burn your face off off. I, I, uh, I just feel like direwolves are ever so slightly more loyal. They're just big puppies really. Anyway, do let me know if you've read any of the books that I've spoken about today. Alternatively, do let me know about any that should be added to my list. I'm not an expert in this time period by any means. I am just slowly building up my resources for it and building up my little reading list. I would love to hear from you. I hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye!